Hello and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. For today's beer review, we're jumping into a, um, well, you could call it a single beer review, but it's uh, the first time in a long time that I focused on a local Florida craft brewer. So uh, it is a review of a beer from a local craft brewer in uh, my home base. I'm still in Tampa Bay and I'm getting very soon to move into the Asheville area. So I thought I would take the opportunity to get a few more local Florida and Tampa Bay area craft brewers reviewed. And this specific one, I have never reviewed a beer for this channel before uh, from this brewer and they are phenomenal. This is from Cycle Brewing Company. They're based in St. Petersburg, Florida. That's in Pinellas County, uh, coastal city, uh, just opposite Tampa. And this specific beer is called Monday. It is an Imperial Stout The clocks in at 12% ABV. And this one has been barrel aged and it's specifically maple barrels. I believe they formerly housed maple syrup. I believe we will confirm that when we get into the tasting. Uh, but it was also brewed with cinnamon, vanilla, cacao, peppers, and maple syrup. So, uh, label art on this one, um, very colorful. Purple and pink just has a big M on kind of a sci-fi 80s looking vibe thing. I don't know how to describe it, but I like it. It looks quite neat. Other than that, a nice big bottle. We're gonna get this cracked gently. Pour it right in the old stout glass. This will not hold the whole beer. Okay, very thick and dark, so let's be aggressive here. Give it a chance to form a head. Being intentionally aggressive, sloshing it, if you will. We'll back it off right there. This one does seem pretty active in terms of carbonation, so I don't know how well that head is gonna hold, but it did finally form one. Uh, visually, it is absolutely pitch black. I could tell you it has an extremely pronounced aroma, which we're about to get right up on top of for a full exploration. Oh man, yeah. Okay, that smells really, really good. Uh, the things that jump out at you the most in this beer is the intensity of the roasted malt bill in tandem with that maple. Uh, the cinnamon is there, it's a little subtle. The vanilla is there on the nose, that's also a little subtle. And I'm not really picking up anything that smells like peppers, but there's definitely a rich roasty malt bill here. Almost takes on a coffee vibe in the aroma. And uh, the maple in particular really comes through. So yeah, that head already broke down. It is what it is, it formed okay. I just assumed it was gonna be a little too active in terms of carbonation to maintain, and indeed I was correct. But this beer looks pitch black, absolutely dense and decadent, hugely thick as I poured it. It smells amazing. It's been many years since I've uh, got to jump into a big cycle beer. So we're gonna do exactly that. Taste one. Oh, wow. Oh, that is delicious. That's a delicious combination of flavors. On the heels of the Hubbard Scavale Zacatone in our last review, we're kind of going down that same path. This is one of those big, bold, pungent, in-your-face Imperial Stouts, and it's absolutely delicious. So, before we even get into the flavor profile, which is quite complex, will take me at least one more dive in to pick it all apart. Let's talk about this texture in the body. This is a 12% Imperial. You would expect a 12% ABV Imperial to be a big robust beer. This is extremely heavy. It is a very, very heavy beer. It does not feel light in any way, shape, form, or fashion. It is extremely dense and you can feel the weight of that beer as soon as you get it in your mouth and when you swallow. Texturally, there is a boatload of resistance to this. Absolutely viscous. And you could see as I was pouring it, it looked very thick. That absolutely translates into the glass. It is heavy, it is thick, it is viscous. It does a really nice job of coating uh, the palate in this intensity of flavor, which is quite bold and in your face. In terms of uh, agitation around the palate, does it get creamy, silky, anything like that? No, it doesn't get foamy, creamy, silky. You can just really feel really feel the resistance of this beer as you move it around. It is very, very thick, thick, heavy beer. So flavor profile, okay. 
there's a lot happening in this beer and uh, more or less what I was getting on the aroma is what's translating in the glass here with a little bit more intensity from some that were a bit subtle. So the first thing you get when you swallow is this intensity of roast uh, from the underlying malt bill in tandem with the maple that absolutely jumps out at you first. And I gotta say, maple is one of those ingredients for my money is a little bit tricky with which to brew. I've had many beers that have been aged in syrup barrels, maple is most often, and a lot of beers that have had maple, maple syrup added. It can easily overpower a brew because of its uh, inherent intensity of flavor profile. That did not happen here. This is extremely well balanced and it drives with the underpinning of the malt bill, which is the fundamental basis upon which all of the added ingredients uh, are pinned. So that for me is a boon. And just for my own sake, I'm gonna look on the side of the label, just read what it says. Uh, barrel aged maple uh, with cinnamon, vanilla bean, cacao nibs, and peppers. So yeah, I didn't miss anything. So I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss if it said coffee. There's a lot of coffee flavor quality and aroma quality coming off of the depth of roast from this malt bill. There's no coffee in here, but you, if you were just drinking this blind, you would swear they were. So it's one of those really deep, rich, intense roasts with a ton of volume of that malt. And it's uh, very much aligned with kind of that style of roasted malt that's on the border of being burned, pulled before the smoke point, which often translates into a strong coffee-like aroma and flavor in the beer. That is absolutely true in this case. So I'm gonna jump back in. I'm gonna need a second sip on this. I'm gonna really pay attention uh, since we talk texture to exactly the order of operations of the flavors and the intensity, how they round out, and then we'll talk about this finish, but an absolutely delicious beer. This one's huge, it's phenomenal. Take two. Roast and maple immediately. It is boom, in your face intensity. The peppers come in about two and a half, three seconds after that. It's subtle. Um, it's more of a little bit of a flavor suggestion and just the tiniest hint of heat. There is a tiny hint of heat here. Once you get to about the seven, eight second after the sip mark and the intensity dials back a bit, that's when the subtlety of the vanilla and the cinnamon starts to open up. And I gotta say in uh, terms of the two, the vanilla is a lot more prominent and it really does a great job of binding to that maple. The cinnamon is kind of floating on the back. It's there, but it's subtle. It's subtle in the aroma and it's subtle in the flavor. So this is not one of those big, bold in your face, cinnamon forward beers. It's there as an additive to kind of balance out additional flavor profiles and aromas. So it's very, very nice. I personally love cinnamon and I don't think I could ever have a beer that has too much, but I gotta say this is well balanced. I see what they're doing with this and it's absolutely fantastic. In a lot of ways, this almost reminds me of almost a dessert-like beer in a sense, in that I'm getting this kind of French toast vibe off of it. It's this maple and the balance of it paired with these other ingredients that really just, it, it, it's taking me back to my childhood when my mom would make French toast at home, always with a little dusting of confectioner sugar on top. I mean, this is just a phenomenal beer. And yes, I know I probably shouldn't have, but I did drink coffee as a kid. I loved it from a very young age. So uh, yeah, I mean, th this is just one of those beers. This is a dessert beer or a breakfast style beer. It's absolutely huge. And this is delicious. This is a really great example of why Cycle Brewing is considered one of the top craft brewers in the state for sure and well-earned. I absolutely agree with their accolades. They're very inventive. They brew a lot of different beers and they uh, do a lot of special barrel aged beers on premise. Some you can only get on tap, but the fact that they partner with Tavor lets people throughout the country get access to them, and that's a beautiful thing. I absolutely love this. Um, in terms of the finish, it's quite long. This is not barrel aged in the sense of a spirit, but the intensity of the flavors on this beer really do 
linger on the palate for an extended period of time. And really where it lingers on the back of the palate, and honestly, it's it's not just the back of the palate, it's almost the entire palate. Take the tip away, everything else is just coated in this flavor that just sticks long after each sip. And where it, after about the 30, 40 second mark when the intensity is down and you're just left with a residual, what you're left with is a combination of maple and that underlying malt bill that's full of roast and these coffee uh, kind of notes that keep popping in. And it's absolutely delicious. I love this beer. It's been a long time since I've had a cycle brewing beer and I am not disappointed. I'm gonna take my time to sip on this, come up my scores. When we come back, we will get this one ranked from top to bottom. All right, now that we've gotten to enjoy this beer, we're gonna get it ranked. This was Cycle Brewing Company's Monday 2021 release. This is an Imperial Stout clocking in at 12% that was maple barrel aged and brewed with cinnamon, vanilla, cacao, peppers, and also additional maple syrup. Cycle Brewing is based in St. Petersburg, Florida. So starting with the aroma. The aroma on this beer was very, very nice. It was very, very pronounced. Uh, the maple in particular, really jumped out at you and you could really get the undercurrents of the roastiness of the malt bill as well. Well above average pungency, had a ton of aroma presence. Aroma gets a 10 out of 10. For the taste, I really, really enjoyed the flavor profile of this beer. Um, maple is one of those kind of tricky ingredients with which to brew, but I think that Psycho Brewing did a very good job with it and they kind of doubled up on it because they aged it in maple barrels but this combination of ingredients really worked quite well. The one thing that I could say was uh, the balance I probably would tweak, but it didn't ruin the flavor profile for me. Uh, in the grand scheme, I thought it was very well done and it was certainly nice, pungent, bold flavors. Taste, I did give it 10 out of 10. For the body, this was a very heavy beer indeed. 12% is to be expected. Body gets a 10 out of 10. For the mouthfeel, the mouthfeel on this beer was extremely resistant. This was a very thick, very viscous beer, and it really paired nicely with that very heavy body. Mouthfeel gets a 10 out of 10. For the finish, finish on this beer was quite long. Um, you might expect it with a big uh, barrel aged, you know, flavor added Imperial Stout, but even though this wasn't spirit barrels, it wasn't bourbon, it wasn't whiskey, it was just maple syrup, the intensity of the flavor here was so pronounced that it really drove out the length of the finish. And very much on the back end, uh, kind of as uh, potent as it was on the aroma, again, was that richly roasted malt and that uh, maple underpinning. Finish, very long indeed, it gets a 10 out of 10. For the head and retention, and eh, this one really didn't do that great. It was really, you know, just, it is what it is. You, you get a beer that's this thick, that's this high ABV with this many ingredients that also has that level of uh, activity in terms of carbonation. It has a hard time forming a head and retaining one once it has. This one, head and retention, gets a three out of 10. For the appearance, the appearance was absolutely pitch black as expected. Appearance gets a 10 out of 10. For the balance, Overall, I did enjoy the balance of the beer, uh, but I just did touch on this when talking about the flavor profile. Um, for me, there were some subtleties in the flavor profile, and uh, cinnamon was a prominent one, and a little bit of the peppers. I would have liked a little bit more of the heat to come through that they put in here, and certainly uh, a bigger presence from the cinnamon. That's a big, bold ingredient, and maybe they didn't want it to outshine everything else, um, but I personally was feeling like just a little extra peppers, a little extra cinnamon uh, would have kicked this beer up and kind of elevated it and let everything have a little more clear voice for their added ingredients. But overall, I did think the balance was well above average. Balance gets an eight out of 10. For the feeling in the intangible, subjectively, I really enjoyed the beer. I give it a 10 out of 10. Finally, as an example is the style. So, you know, this is another one of those big classic multi-additive ingredient uh, Imperial Stouts. They went a different direction with the barrel aging, but uh, I mean, it was, it was excellent. A very, very tasty beer. Um, really the only thing that held this back from top marks as an example, I think, was 
just it's really poor head creation and retention. Then a couple little balance drinks on the added ingredients. But as an example of what one of these high ABV added ingredient aged uh, Imperial Stouts is, this is certainly well above average. Example of the style, I did give a nine out of 10, which brings the total score on Psycho Brewing's Monday 2021 release to a 90 out of 100. So overall, a very, very nice beer. This is the type of beer that is really for the big, bold, in-your-face, flavor-forward fan, be that stouts or any other beer style. Um, there's a lot of beers that kind of follow the similar path. Uh, this, with that maple barrel aging in particular, kind of went a little bit different direction. But overall, this kind of combination of ingredients, the peppers, the vanilla, the cacao, the cinnamon, this is relatively common. Indeed, we just looked at Hubbard's Cave's El Zacaton. Granted, that has a much longer uh, list of ingredients. Um, the core of it is pretty similar. So this one kind of makes a mark for itself by deviating with that maple. And I think it made for a very interesting beer drinking experience. I would uh, personally have liked a few little tweaks in it, but overall, a very nice beer. So if you're a fan of these big, bold, in-your-face, flavor forward that just punch right out at you beers. This is one I would definitely keep my eyes on. Folks, that's today's review. As always, I do sincerely appreciate you tuning in today. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to stay in the loop when our videos go live, just turn on the notifications, hit that bell icon. It's right next to the subscribe button. Until next time, keep it beer, keep it craft. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.